Hey folks, so this week I'm going to be diving into a title that may look brutally familiar to veterans of Hotline Miami's high octane hijinks. That's right, I received a nifty review key for Paper Cult's Blood Roots, which replaces the neon soaked streets of Miami with a more rural rampage. That said, did its frantic pacing make for a phenomenally fun time? Or did this murder and mayhem ridden march make for a grisly mess of a game? I'm your host, Arlian, and let's find out together. Mr. Wolf is not having a good day. Understandably, since most don't begin with your former companions leaving you for dead after the brutal devastation of a town. In all honesty, he'd be forgiven for giving up the ghost there and then. That said, Mr. Wolf is bigger and badder than most, and our ludicrous lumberjack-esque protagonist is a prime example of local man too angry to die. At the very least, until he can bury the hatchet with his former companions. More literally than figuratively. That said, as much as the initial premise seems clear-cut, Mr. Wolf's past with the bloodthirsty beasts is anything but, and his blood-soaked journey will slowly unveil the moments leading up to their fateful betrayal. As far as premises go, it's definitely apropos for something western-themed. That said, while there certainly may be some genuine moments of suspense building and drama, Bloodroot spends the crux of its time basking in its own unrepentant wackiness. Your opposition is a small band of overdramatic and altogether unhinged banditos, the aforementioned bloodthirsty beasts, and even the protagonist is a bit zany in a sense that there's an almost Looney Tunes-esque quality to the altogether psychotic displays of homicidal behavior he engages in. Just, uh, don't squint too long at the body count. Still, as, as much as the game is campy, I didn't find it detracted from the overall narrative. If anything, it helps to highlight those moments when the game grows increasingly dark, and frankly, the transition to those moments feels natural enough, especially given how much foreshadowing is baked into Bloodroot's bones. And hell, even if I did call it as far as certain developments went, the overall presentation of the game still left me perpetually excited to see more. Which is why I found a shame that I couldn't actually revisit the majority of these scenes. Specifically, that I was hindered from popping back to those which unfurled after I'd cleared a stage, so I could potentially reference what was said when I had context provided by the later game revelations. There's also a weirdly vexum counterpoint to this as, while there's no such limitations for the scenes which took place during a level, since they'd replay every time I revisited, and you're not able to skip or fast forward through these, so I wound up seeing them a lot, given that Bloodroots is one of those titles that incentivizes revisiting its stages. Though, I suppose that's more of a gameplay nuance. See, Bloodroots is a frantic murderathon that tasks players with exploring its stages and efficiently annihilating your enemies. Which is easier said than done, really, since the levels are genuinely lengthy arrangements of arena esque set pieces, replete with enemies and obstacles poised to wipe the floor with you. In and of themselves, they'd be more than capable of tormenting you with their traps and tactics, but the game emphasizes bringing your A-game here since every error on your part will result in instantaneous death. Thankfully, the same goes for the crux of your adversary, so it's less of a careful advance forward and more of a frantic and off-fatal rush to the finish line. I mean, you can be sneaky, but admittedly, you'd be missing the point, because Bloodroots is best played fast and furious. Part of this is simply because you're not actually missing out on much when you die, given that respawn times are next to nil and the game is more than happy to provide a plethora of checkpoints, one for the beginning of each arena within the stage. That said, the game also emphasizes haste if only due to its combo system. See, each of the game's various stages have a scoreboard, which allows you to compete with your friends. And more relevant to my completionist interests, Scoring high enough in certain stages provides special alternate master Mr. Wolf, which you can don in levels you've already cleared in order to get new abilities, like being able to dash punch, hover jumps, starting with a gun, and just other odds and ends. I mean, you also get masks for beating the bosses, but if you want everything, you'll need to work on your combo game. And that is, by far, the hardest thing I had to do in Bloodroots. See, while your high score gets some padding from how quickly you clear a stage and how varied your kills are, the crux of what you earn will be from how many kills you've comboed together. 
The thing is, you're not actually given a large amount of time between kills, which turned the game from a blood-soaked brawl into a pugilistic puzzler. Seriously, charting out just optimal courses through the various arenas can be hard, as you'll be like balancing out optimal murderification with moving on towards your next target, all while you're doing your best to avoid or even take advantage of the obstacles present and figuring out things to grab along the way. I'll be the first to admit that a few of the stages were nightmarishly challenging for me, and yet there was a distinct sense of satisfaction when I figured out brand new ways to tackle a sequence I tried before, to shave a few precious seconds off to ensure that I could keep a combo going where I previously lost it and to just make everything flow so nicely. Which, on that note, I am incredibly grateful that the combo meter doesn't run out when you're between arenas. It's a lovely anti-frustration mechanic, as is the fact that your combo is saved when you start the next area. Though, uh, I'll admit it can be super frustrating to start a segment and have almost no time flat to get a fresh kill to keep things going. It's, uh, yeah, fraught. It's fraught. It's very fraught. And I would also like to chime in as a note here on the point of fraughtness that since it starts counting down the moment you load in, it can really be hard to get back in that sweet spot of continuing the combo forward. That said, it really is hard to describe that ecstatic feeling you get when you finally manage to clear a level by chaining every single kill together in one continuous combo. Especially given the fact that you'll have more than likely picked up and wielded a veritable laundry list of weapon to do it with. I have to say, for a game that tasked players with so much improvisation, I was really glad that the various weapons you can scoop up felt satisfying to use, and it was really neat to discover that so many of them had a wide variety of uses. Ores, for instance, have a, a useful wide range sweep, but can also be used to pole vault for some impressive jumps. Swords, on the other hand, provide some stellar forward lunges that you can use to get around the map quickly, and can be used in the air for puzzle solving. And then there's some simpler options, like smacking someone in the face with a trout. Not Nothing else to say about that, really. It's just really delightfully dumb. And before I potentially disenfranchise some of the folks who view suffering as anathema, there is an assist mode in the game. Mostly it just offers the options of providing invulnerability in clearing out arenas instantly, which actually saw some use in the post-game for me since there's collectible wolves to be found in various stages, and really there's only so many times I can be bothered to dunk through in a regiment of red shirts while I'm sweeping through the area. I had more important things to do, like obsessing over the weird communal riddle you gain access to when you get all the wolves, which seems to generate different entries for different people when they get them. You can't see it. But I am internally screaming right now and making a motion at my editor to cue the next section. Because, I mean, when, when it comes to the game's graphics, I legitimately have nothing but praise and positivity, and that is going to calm me right the fuck down. See, Bloodroots has an altogether distinct and enjoyable style to witness, and it really brings all the chaos you're wreaking to life. That said, it hits its absolute peak with the various weapon finishers you trigger on an area's final enemy. Seriously, these miniature cutscenes showcase some absolutely brutal and over-the-top finishers which varied from giving me weeby warm fuzzies to being fucking hilarious to just wincing in sympathy for my unfortunate victim. And this stylistic win hardly ends with just the visuals. The sound effects are just delightful throughout, and the soundtrack kept my blood pumping even as I worked my hardest to keep it all flowing. That's a, uh, murder comment, N not an erection comment. Anyways, it's great, and as a small aside, I did appreciate the little bits of voice work for your antagonists. Their roars and battle cries were pretty darn amusing. It it's just a Charlie Brown, but weirder. Anyways, that brings me to the end, and yeah, my basic takeaway for Bloodroots is the following. Someone out there decided that a significantly less bleak Hotline Miami needed to be made and proceeded to stuff it into a pair of blood-soaked lumberjack pants and set it loose on society. And they did a damn good job of it. When I finally picked up this game, I found myself playing the shit out of it. Even when I wasn't streaming it for the channel, I'd still find myself puttering around in it. First it was hunting high scores for the mass, then it was wandering for wolves, the most pettable of collectibles. And then finally, it was roving due to the riddle, which I still haven't solved, work in progress. Still, all that meant is I got to take a close look at the levels, I got to see the various routes which were available. Like, 
When I took my time in stages, I wound up discovering a lot of different items just cached away, which made for some really just interesting bits of experimentation. Hell, there's even some neat alternate paths you can discover, such as getting into a fort by cutting down a tree and using it as a ramp. Overall, Bloodroots is just a very well-crafted game, and I'd be remiss to say anything other than I wholeheartedly recommend it. Well, that and that for every ounce of frustration it provided me, I wound up walking away altogether satisfied with my time. Other than the whole communal riddle thing, still waiting to get that piece together. Uh, any of you guys you want to help me? That'd be good. Right. Um, anyways, so all together, what I'm saying, given it's got me to obsess over it so much and just how much I enjoyed my time with it, you can safely consider it a crit hit in my books. Anywho, thanks for tuning in. If you agree, disagree, or just have something to say to me, feel free to comment. If you have any interest in supporting my efforts to create new indie reviews, interviews, and gaming content in general, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you know when there's a new release. There's also a Discord, a link in the description, so you can become part of our community, the Crit Hit Cauldron. That said, I'll catch you on the next episode of Crit Hit. Take care till then, folks.